we're no strangers to the pilot gap. Currently, we're at a deficit of over 11% in pilots. Around the world, military and civilian employers alike have found themselves needing pilots more than ever, and this is only looking to increase in the coming years. But the pilot shortage affects every single one of us. Whenever we order something on Amazon that's shipped by air, fewer pilots means it's going to take longer to reach us. We're finding ourselves with longer airport wait times than ever and more canceled flights. A large contributing factor to this pilot shortage is the noticeable lack of women in the aviation field. Currently, women make up less than 9% of FAA certified pilots. Often, we tend to group aerospace in with other traditionally male-dominated fields, often medicine, but I'd like to know in the audience, who here knows a female medical professional? A doctor, nurse, pediatrician, physician? All right, that's almost half of us. Who here knows a female pilot or aerospace engineer? Got two, two, three people. All right, so clearly these odds we see here show that aerospace has a slightly bigger problem than other fields such as medicine. And these odds prove true in the greater world as well. When we look to the medical field, we see that about 40% of surgeons and physicians are women. In the legal field, which is often traditionally considered male-dominated as well, women make up about 38% of lawyers. And yet when we look to aerospace, we see that number 9% of pilots. That drops to 5% when we look at commercial and airline pilots. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a family that traveled frequently, but I never remember seeing a woman piloting my flights. So what's the problem? Why do we have such a prominent gender gap in aerospace? We often tend to group it with these other industries, but clearly they don't have as much of that issue. Young girls are growing up in exhilarating times right now. We're seeing new NASA launches with the most powerful rockets we've ever seen, and private companies such as SpaceX are making a huge rise. But yet, when we think about joining those industries, the odds that we face continue to be unencouraging. When I was 15, before I ever drove a car, I had the opportunity to fly a plane for the first time. And I was so excited and a little bit nervous, but among everything else, I felt this emotion of unease. Originally from Poland, I've had the opportunity to see how youth in other countries around the world views aviation opportunities, and that often they're not awarded the same ones. This led to me drafting ideas for my nonprofit, the Girls in Aerospace Foundation, which I've been leading for almost two and a half years at this point. The nonprofit has made me feel like I'm contributing to the elimination of this gap, but even more importantly, it forced me into these difficult conversations at a young age. Why does this gap exist? Why is it so much more prominent than in other fields? What's the problem? Why haven't we fixed it? And how do we finally begin chipping away at this gap until we can reach true aerospace equity? The aerospace industry itself hasn't quite understood what the problem is. Some of these elements are very well researched. Studies show that the vast general public still views aviation as a field that men naturally excel in. And because flight school is expensive, since men are taught that they can naturally excel in it, they're more likely to make that investment. And if a woman does choose to go to flight school, she'll likely be completely surrounded by men. An average of 90% of every flight school class is entirely made up of men. Her instructor will most likely be male as well. But if a woman does make it through flight school and decides to pursue the field professionally, she's also more likely to get critically judged for errors. Studies show that female pilots receive more criticism for the same errors as their male peers. So how do we fix this? Recently, at the European Space Summit, they took a new approach. Instead of looking at the industry and the sexism that the women face when they're already in the industry, they decided to look earlier, to when women were younger, and they found that the single biggest problem for women going into STEM, especially aerospace, was their own confidence from a young age. The issue, these researchers explained, is the same issue that we looked at years ago when we were trying to diversify medical, legal, and other fields. Traditional boys' toys are cars, trains, rockets, whereas girls are often still given the traditional toys focused around caring, such as dolls, teddy bears, stuffed animals. So from a young age, we're teaching girls that they should pursue caring careers, which is why the medical field has had such huge successes, especially in nursing. But that doesn't quite play out for aerospace. Hundreds of equity offices around the world have officially recognized these habits as negatively impacting what we consider men's work and women's work. We need to stop planting the seed to young girls that there's a specific avenue they need to go down or that they're innately made for some sort of work. So yes, 
Cheaper flight schools are a great idea, and so are high school STEM programs. But the problem with the aerospace gender gap lies much earlier. We need to fix this gap the same way we fix any diversity gap, by focusing on the people before we focus on the environment, by starting young. So the bottom line for fixing the aerospace gender gap is we need to start earlier. We need to show children that there's no bounds to what they can accomplish, that they shouldn't be limiting themselves by what they see. We should be providing toys that promote the same opportunities for every single one of our blooming future aerospace engineers and pilots. So the next time you talk to a young girl about what she wants to be when you grow up, I hope you find it in yourself to ask, have you thought about being a pilot? Thank you. Thank you.